Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my first painting tutorial. This is going to be how to paint a Space Marine Tech Marine. Uh, the model I'm using here is the old Games Workshop Metal Tech Marine. Um, he's on direct order only now, you can't buy him um, in stores but he's still readily available online. And he's one of the few Space Marine miniatures still available in metal. Because he's metal, I used the Gale Force 9 Hobby Glue to assemble him. I find this works much better than the GW glue. Um, it's got the real sort of high viscosity, really strong hold, works very well for these type of models. And I base coated him with the Citadel Chaos Black Spray. After I'd done that, I gave him an initial um, first layer using the Citadel base paint, Corn Red. These Citadel paints are, um, or base paints, have very high pigment density which can mean they're a little bit thick so you need to add some water to that and it's better to apply this in two thin layers rather than one thick layer to avoid losing the detail and for this first coat as you can see I've really gone sort of all over on this guy regardless of what colour it's eventually going to end up. This red provides a really solid sort of base coat and at this stage it doesn't matter if I get it on other bits of the model because um, they are eventually going to get painted over anyway so it's just a nice solid base colour here. Next thing I'm going to do is using the Citadel Lead Belcher layer paint I'm going to pick out all the metallic details. Obviously as a tech marine he's got good sort of a lot of uh, metallic parts, cables, his uh, servo arm his power axe, get all of that in um, lead belcher. So I'll be back in a minute once I've done that. Right guys, welcome back. As you can see, I've now um, picked out the uh, all the metallic details on this model using lead belcher. Um, at this stage, it's not as important to be perfectly accurate, particularly in the deeper recesses, because we're now going to give this model two ink washes. I'm going to start with Citadel Null Oil and this is going to be applied very specifically to the silver parts of the model to uh, tone them down and add some shading there and then I'm going to go on to use Agrax Earthshade and this is going to be applied over the whole model. The effect I'm going to be looking for here is that the, um, the Agrax Earthshade will, will shade the red to give the, um, give the model some depth while the null oil um, combined with the Agrax Earthshade over the metallic parts will make them, uh, will sort of take some of the sheen off them initially and give them depth but also make them look quite oily because these are um, these aren't sort of decorative bits of metal they're majoritively moving machine parts that are going to be well lubricated and well worn so um, yeah the uh, darker tone for that will just help to uh, to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to apply both those colours now, leaving a good amount of time to dry in between. And once it's all dry, I'll be back with the next bit. Okay, so now the two layers of ink wash have dried. You can see that the um, model's got a lot more depth to it with the, the darkness in the recesses. And the metallic parts are looking a bit more worn and, and well used. So the next thing we're going to do is start building up the highlighting on the model. Um, and I'm going to start with the metal parts because this is probably the easiest and simplest thing to highlight on the model. Uh, and for this we're just going to give them a dry brush. I'm going to use Games Workshop Necron Compound Dry Paint. As this is one of the dry paints it's really important not to add any water to it. Just get um, a small amount on your brush. Wipe the majority of, uh, majority of it off on a piece of paper and then just brush it lightly over the effect over the um, the metallic areas on the model to give them a nice highlight. So I'll be back in a minute when I've done that. Right, so now the metallic parts on the Tech Marine are looking nice and shiny. Um, it's time to go on to, uh, to working on the main armour. Now this has already got base coat and shade on it, so it's time for um, two layers to build up the highlight. First we're going to go back to the corn red over the majority of the army armour panels um, just leaving a small amount of the Agrax earth shade sh still showing in the recesses. Um, that's then going to get a final highlight on the edges with Wasdaka red uh, but I'm not going to apply that until I've almost finished the model 
Um, after we do the corn red, we're going to do the other details and then come back and do the Waz Deca red at the end. So I'll be back in a minute once we've done the, uh, the corn red layer. OK, so with the layer of corn red applied, you can see that the armour panels are looking a bit brighter, but you can still see the depth of shadow in the recesses. You may notice that his shoulder pad on his uh, bolt pistol side hasn't really um, been highlighted properly. That's because this is going to be a different colour. Um, Tech Marines generally keep one shoulder pad in the colour of their chapter, uh, so that will be done in salamander colours. Before I do any more highlighting to the, um, the armour, I'm going to pick out some of the other colours that are going to be on there. So we're going to use Abaddon Black for a lot of the, um, the cog patterns and the general armour details uh, that are going to be black. Then on the shoulder pad rim, on the uh, side that's going to bear the chapter colours, we're going to use Wire Flesh to base coat for the green. And then any bits that need to be white on the um, the me uh, Mechanicum symbol, I'm going to base coat with a grey tone to start with, and that's going to be Dawnstone. So I'm going to apply those three colours to the model and be back in a minute. Now with those secondary colours base coated, um, we're then going to add some Ulthwan grey to the grey parts to bring them up much closer to white, just leaving a little bit of the Dawnstone showing in the recesses and Warpstone Glow to the green part of the shoulder pad to bring that into line with the main colour in my Salamander army just leaving a little bit of the darker green showing through um, I'll be back in a minute after I've done that Okay, both of those colours are now applied and um, but she took two coats to do them which is absolutely fine, it's always better to do two thin coats rather than one thick coat um, give you a much nicer um, finishing result and that's often the way you need to do with some of these thinner brighter colours. Now I'm going to go on and paint in his eye lenses and some of the uh, like the scanning devices on his helmet. Normally I would do these in a red colour but because the rest of the model's red they would really not stand out at all so I'm going to use green for these. I'm going to start off by basing them in warpstone glow. I'm going to do the eyes and any other sort of little scanning lights and devices on the model. So I'll be back in a minute once that's done. Next I'm going to paint a layer of moot green over about two-thirds of the eyes and the scanners that I've already painted in Warpstone Glow. This is to start to give those areas a little bit of a glow. Then to finish up the glowing effect I'm going to apply a little bit of Skarsnik green into the bottom corner of the um, the scanners and just the inside corner of the eye before putting a tiny drop of skull white onto the far top corner of the scanners to give them a, a really nice glowing effect. Okay so now our tech marines at a perfectly acceptable tabletop standard and you could just leave him like this but to really make the model pop a bit more what I want to do is give him an edge highlight. Um, this will involve applying a thin layer of a lighter colour around the edges of all the armour panels and all the bits that would catch the light. So for the areas I've done in Ulthwan Grey, I'm going to use White Scar. For the bits I've done in Warpstone Glow, we're going to use um, Warboss Green. For the black parts, I'm going to use Dawnstone. And then for the red parts, I'm going to use Wazdaka Red. So the aim of this is just to apply a very thin line of this around all the edges, all the bits that we catch the light. Right, so uh, with all the edge highlighting done, the model looks a lot more three-dimensional now. Um, you'll see I've also picked out all the little bolts and rivets with just a tiny drop of lead belcher, just to uh, give them some, some colour and give them a real sort of... Uh, mechanical look. Last thing I'm going to do on the model now is to paint the salamander chapter symbol on the, on the shoulder pad. Um, you can use a transfer for this, there's a perfectly good one that's made, but I personally prefer to hand paint it on. As you can see I've got it on this dreadnought here um, and that's what I'm going to be applying to the model, just using a uh, white scar. It will definitely take two layers to do this because painting white over black doesn't go well, but two layers of that should do the job. 
Um, and yeah, that will pretty much be our Techmarine done. There we go, with the salamander chapter symbol painted on the shoulder pad. The model itself is now complete. The only thing that I've got left to do is the base. Now obviously with any basing you're going to want to match it up with whatever the rest of your army is based on. Uh, mine has quite a, a sort of a variety of sort of ruined battlefield and cityscape bases. Um, as you can see from this guy here, there's sort of a, a sort of a dusty grey sort of urban ruins or ash waste type of base. Um, but the Tech Marine himself I've actually modelled standing on a bit of ruined tank. Now obviously I'm not going to paint this in my own army's colours, he's not going to be standing victoriously over his own ruined tank. I'm going to paint this up as an enemy tank, uh, and I'm actually going to paint it as if it was from the Night Lords chapter of Chaos, or oh, sorry, the Night Lords Legion of Chaos Space Marines. So the metallic parts I'm going to do in my normal metal scheme, and then we're going to use Necron Abyss as the main colour, and give it a very thin edge highlight of techless blue just to uh, yeah, make that look like um, Night Lord's Chaos Space Marines and that will pretty much finish up this model. There we go, with the base done this Tech Marine is now completely finished. Um, in addition to what I said I was going to do on the base, I ended up giving it a wash of Nuln Oil as well just to darken it down that little bit more. But um, yeah, there we go, that's him finished. It's actually a surprisingly nice model to work with. Um, I needed to add a tech marine to my army because I wanted to do the um, uh, armoured task force formation that requires you to have at least three vehicle squadrons of rhino, um, sorry, rhino chassis tanks, so whirlwinds, predators or vindicators, and you have to take at least one tech marine in there. Um, so that's why I did him, but actually a very nice model considering it was brought out in like 1992 or 93, so we're talking about a model that's over 20 years old, but um, and, and metal, which is generally not considered the best thing these days compared to the modern plastics, is actually uh, went together very nicely. Uh, not much in the way of flash, and certainly better than the fine cast stuff that's coming out at the moment. Uh, but yeah, that's my tech marine. Hope you like this video. Um, if you do, let me know, and I'll make more. Bye.